Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Suzanne Hassan from Monarch Heliopolis School and today we are talking about paraphrasing. What is paraphrasing and why do we use it? Paraphrasing is the restatement of another person's ideas using your own words and to describe an item heard or read about. Why do we use paraphrasing? We use paraphrasing to avoid what is called plagiarism or sarika adabiyya. That is, to copy the words of some author or some writer and use them as being your own words which is not true. So, this is considered as an illegitimate work or an illegal work. So, instead of doing, doing this, you can paraphrase what this writer or what this author wrote in your own words and in this way it will be a legitimate work. For example, we have weather news. The news says there is an 80% chance of rain tomorrow. Then you can paraphrase this or you can change this into your own words when you tell a friend that it will probably rain tomorrow. So this shows you truly understand the original idea. So, your own rendition or your own change of essential information and ideas expressed by someone else presented in a new form is also to paraphrase and it is a legitimate way when accompanied by accurate documentation to borrow from a source. What is documentation? Documentation is to write the name of the writer, the name of the book or the article you've copied from and the date of issue of that book. It's also a more detailed restatement than a summary because the summary focuses concisely, uh, sorry, the summary focuses on the main ideas, but here you focus concisely on a single main idea. So, in paraphrasing, you have three criteria. Same meaning as the original, different enough to be considered your own and refer directly to the original source. So, same meaning as original, that all main ideas are included and no new ideas are added. It's different enough to be considered your own, that is, no more than four words in a row from the original uh, text, change grammar and vocabulary as much as possible, and refer directly to the original source, that is, to include the author's name, year of publication, and or the name of the source. Here, for example, an original text, and here two ways of, of paraphrasing this text. Let's read the original text. Genuine multitasking too has been exposed as a myth, not just by laboratory studies, but by the familiar sight of an SUV undulating between lanes as the driver cuts deals on his cell phone. Here the name of the writer is written, and the name of the book or the article, and the date of publication. Here, let's have a look on the first paraphrase. Pinker, 2010, writes that people cannot really do more than one activity at a time. This can be seen from scientific research projects and also from just watching a car moving unpredictably on the highway while the driver is talking on a cell phone. The second way of paraphrasing, Pinker, 2010, said that both lab research and actual experience show that people are incapable of doing several activities at once. As an example of this act, he mentions the frequent sighting of a person driving dangerously while using a cell phone. So, as you can see here, two ways of paraphrasing, they, gi they give the meaning of the original text, but without copying any of the actual words of the writer. Here also, I have an example. A global village was upon us that more and more it resembled an American buffet table, even if chilies, chutney, and kimchi were added to the mix. Here the name of the writer also, and the name of the magazine or the book, and the year of publication. The paraphrase, we came to a big table with food from many different countries, but it was really a lot like an American meal. This is the first paraphrase. The second one, in this article, Rifkin, 2003, indicates that globalization had made the whole world seem increasingly more like the United States, although there have been contributions 
from many other cultures. So he gave the same meaning without copying the original text of the author and he also mentioned the name of the writer in this paraphrase so that it is considered as a legal work. So the paraphrasing techniques. They are tell a friend using chunks or you can say chunking and use grammar toolbox. The first technique which is tell a friend. You have to read and understand. Cover the text so you can see. Imagine you are telling a good friend how would you explain it to your friend and write down your explanation then go back to the original. Again, read and understand the text. Cover text so you can see. Imagine that you are telling this to a good friend and write down your explanation then after that you can go back to the original text. For example, this is the original text. Leadership by birth, order apparently holds for both genders. Studies have found that female executives are much more likely to be firstborns than later borns. And also the documentation is written down. The paraphrase is, not only firstborn men, but also firstborn women are more likely to be executives than other people or than people who are later born and he wrote the name of the writer and the year of publication. So he, here I considered the text as being told to a friend. I told him what I understood from the original text. The technique of chunking, this is taking longer parts of the text. You can do this by reading for basic understanding of ideas. You can divide original text into groups of words that we call chunks. You can underline the main ideas, the, the phrases, or the individual words. Then you concentrate on explaining the meaning of each chunk in your own words. Combine explanations into one or more sentence to create a paraphrase. Think about how ideas are related and rearrange chunks into a new order. The first example of chunking. As you can see here in front of you, you have phrases that are underlined and underneath each one of them there is the word chunk and a number. So the first sentence or the first phrase at the chain McDonald's expanded at the chain McDonald's expanded nationwide in the mid 1960s and this is the first chunk. It sought to cut labor costs, and this is chunk two, reduce the number of suppliers, this is chunk three, and ensure that its fries tasted the same at every restaurant, and this is chunk four. McDonald's began switching to frozen French fries in 1966, this is chunk five, and few customers noticed the difference, this is chunk six. Nevertheless, the change had a profound effect on the nation's agriculture and diet. This is chunk seven and uh, eight. Uh, here we have the name of the writer and the date of publication and the name of the article. Let's have a look on the paraphrase. Here, rewording of chunks. He, rewording of the chunks. Here I reworded them. That means I changed them into new words. So, McDonald's spread all over the country during the 1960s. The company tried to spend less on its workers. It got its supplies from fewer sources. It wanted to guarantee that its french fries always tasted the same. The company started using frozen french fries. Not many people realized the change that had been made, but using frozen fries ultimately had a big influence and it influenced you as farming and eating habits.